Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we journey to the mysterious, fog-shrouded glen of Sleepy Hollow. There, we will follow Ichabod Crane as he becomes a part of the strange and wondrous community makes friends with the locals, settles in to hear the ghost stories and folklore about the town, and even falls in love with a stunning, wealthy woman. Before we journey through the mist and dark forests to reach the glen of Sleepy Hollow, let us take a moment to unwind and find comfort in the place that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the surface beneath you. Here and now, there are no obligations. There is no to-do list. By simply closing your eyes, and listening to the sound of my voice, by simply joining me on this cozy journey to Sleepy Hollow, you are already giving your body the rest that it needs. Anything else you are seeking will come soon after. By closing your eyes, and relaxing fully in the comfort of your bed. You are giving your body much needed nourishment. With your eyes closed, allow your body to sink deeper into the mattress beneath you. Feel the comfort of your plush bed Notice where it is in contact with your body. Feel how it cradles your legs, your back, your arms, and relish in how wonderful it feels to just be in a cozy, comfortable bed. Notice how the pillow gives your head a soft place to rest, how it helps smooth out and relax any heavy thoughts or weight you may have been carrying throughout the day. For a moment, let us pretend that your bed is not in your room. Instead, It is deep within a beautiful and lush forest. And tonight is the kind of night that you only stumble upon if you are lucky. The moon is full and heavy, a perfect circle hovering high overhead. It's so big that you can make out the craters and mountains peppering its surface. It seems close enough to touch, like you could reach your fingers out from under your blanket and pluck it from the sky, twirling it in your palm like it is nothing but a marble. That beautiful full moon casts a silver glow over everything that it touches, bathing the entire landscape in an ethereal light. Your gaze drifts down from the full moon and the stars flanking it, and instead takes in the forest around you. It is a lush and vibrant forest, 
with trees as far as the eye can see. There is a brilliant mix of maple, pine, cedar, and oak, and even some tall elms, which look almost as if they are brushing right up against the moon. All of their leaves dance in the gentle breeze that is lacing through the forest, flickering from a dark green to that shimmery, shining silver, depending on which way the wind blows at them. In the leaves of one of the tallest trees, there is an owl nestled in the thick branches. Its tawny coat glows, each speck of brown and black and snow white glistening with every breath that it takes. It ruffles its feathers as it gazes down at you with its big, wide eyes, eyes that are as big and bright as the moon. In its eyes, you see wisdom, and in its gaze, you feel safe. It tilts its head slightly at you, as if it's wondering what has brought you to this forest tonight. It shakes its feathers off a bit, fluffing them up as a cool breeze picks up and brushes over the branch it is roosting on. Each feather dances in the wind, so fluffy and delicate that they don't even seem real. You wonder how something so smooth and soft could keep a creature like the owl afloat. And, soon, you see how well they do. The owl gives you one last look before it drops from the branch, extending its long wings at the last second. It swoops over you with an incredible amount of grace. Flying is like breathing to the owl, effortless and necessary. It flies just over you, its wings nearly brushing against your face as it takes off into the bright night sky but it does so without a single sound. You can't hear the flapping, the force behind it. It is an utterly silent animal as it glides through, casting a big gust of wind down at you. You watch as the owl disappears into the night sky. Soon after, a fog washes over the forest you are in, embracing you much like your blankets are. It is a cool, comforting fog, the kind that reminds you that all you need to be looking at and thinking about at this moment is right in your bed. There is nothing behind you, nothing in front of you. You are giving yourself freedom and permission to simply be, to let the fog embrace you and give you some time to relax and unwind. Now that we have taken the time to relax, and find comfort in the place that we are in here and now. Let us begin our journey to
to the mysterious valley called Sleepy Hollow. The year was 1790, and the town was unlike any other in the country at the time. Terrytown was a small, quiet Dutch settlement tucked away in a secluded glen called Sleepy Hollow. And, indeed, the town was rather sleepy. The forests within the glen seemed to be deeper, darker, and thicker than anywhere else in the country. One could get lost in them with ease, and there was a sense of mystery that washed over anyone who dared to enter it. The forests were often coated in a thick layer of fog, a layer of fog that blanketed the ground and wrapped around the trees, covering the pine needle coated forest floor with ease. Walking through the fog of Sleepy Hollow was like walking in a dream. Every turn seemed stranger and more impossible than the last, and everything felt oddly familiar, yet indistinguishable from the last. Wading through the fog felt like wading through a glassy sea, with no idea when you would reach the shore. But it wasn't just the thick fog that seemed to perpetually blanket the glen of Sleepy Hollow that made it feel otherworldly and strange. Nor was it the vast, dark forests. The trees in Sleepy Hollow seemed to creak more ominously and loudly than anywhere else in the world. It was as though the trees were trying to speak to the world, as if they were whispering long-forgotten stories in every crack, creak, and rustle of their bark and their branches. Walking at night in Sleepy Hollow meant walking beneath a symphony of crackling and snapping and rustling, a release of the endless stories and tales that were buried within the barks long, long ago. And then there were the owls. It was impossible to pass through the forest any time of night without seeing their eyes peering down at you, following every step that you took through the lush grass and wildflowers woven in between the ancient trees. But the owls did not just stare. On occasion, they would follow people through the trees to keep watch of them. They would silently follow behind, gliding effortlessly from branch to branch as people made their way through the forest. The owls would never attack, nor would they even give people a sour look. They were just a presence that followed anyone who passed through. At night, the calls of the owls filled the glen, echoing off the trees and the hills. There was a rhythm to their calls. It was a song they played back and forth.
forth to one another, with sounds that you could never quite remember. All of those things would make some people wary of Sleepy Hollow and of Terrytown, the old Dutch settlement within it. But there was one more thing that put people even more on alert when it came to the town. It was said by everyone who went to the town that it was enchanted. Some believed that long ago when it was just being formed, the settlement was bewitched by some of the first settlers. Others believed that it had been cursed by natives long before that. And no matter whether people believed it was cursed or not, nearly everyone believed that there was something strange going on with the town. Because the locals not only had to make their way through thick forests of fog, where owls followed them and sang to them, but they saw and heard strange things. People claimed to hear voices in the woods, voices that would seemingly come out of the fog and brush against them, sending shivers down their spine. Sometimes, instead of voices, they would hear music, hauntingly beautiful and strange music, woodwinds with notes that cut through the fog and danced against their ears stringed instruments that hummed and shook the ground as they were played, percussion that rumbled like thunder in the far distance. It was as if there was a ghostly orchestra playing a song just for the residents of Terrytown. People would gather in the mornings and often talk about the music they had heard the night before. It forged an odd sense of connection between the residents of the town. The residents claimed they saw shadowy things as they walked by during all hours of the day and of the night. Some would find themselves in trance-like visions that would leave them confused when they awaken. Legends and folklore were exchanged in the town nearly as much as pleas and thank yous were. People wanted to get to the bottom of the mysterious goings-on or, at the very least, they wanted to find a way to explain them away. And one of these legends was so famous, people heard about it far and wide. Of all the folk tales and specters that were discussed in the town, none was spoken about as much as the existence of the Headless Horseman. The Headless Horseman was said to be the ghost of a Hessian soldier from long, long ago. A soldier who was hit in the head by a cannon. Apparently, every single night, he would ride through the town on his black horse desperately searching for his head. Some said he wore a pumpkin in place of his head, 
and others said he simply used the collar of a black cloak to hide himself. But either way, the residents of the town swore they could hear him every night, clomping his way through the outskirts of Terrytown, winding through the thick forests on a desperate quest to find his head. And whether the headless horseman existed or not, it was very clear that something strange was going on, and yet that did not stop Ichabod Crane from making the move to Terrytown. Ichabod Crane was a kind, benevolent, and superstitious man. He had lived many years serving as a schoolmaster in Connecticut but moved to Sleepy Hollow to become their schoolmaster quite some time before our story begins. Ichabod was a tough teacher who often used discipline, but he was still beloved by many of his students. He was careful only to be tough on the students who could bear it, and he aimed to have everyone like him. Not only because he enjoyed being liked, but because he relied on his students' families to provide him with room and board on a weekly basis, since his pay as a schoolmaster was so low. But Ichabod did not mind residing with the town's inhabitants. He tried to make himself useful, often helping them mend fences and work on their farms that were peppered across the beautiful countryside. He enjoyed teaching and spending time with the residents of the town but there was one thing he enjoyed even more. Ichabod was fascinated by tales of the supernatural. He often curled up in his chair at work to read Cotton Mather's History of New England Witchcraft as the students left to go home. He would read it again and again, savoring the pages with childlike glee and fascination as the last embers crackled in the fireplace beside him. Reading tales of the supernatural fueled him with a kind of passion and excitement unlike anything else. That is, until he started his journey home every night. Often, he would scare himself so badly with the stories that he would have to recite psalms to himself to calm down on the walk home. The psalms would give him strength and comfort, even as the trees were crackling above him and he swore he could see a figure somewhere deep within the forest. One of Ichabod's students was a young, 18-year-old Katrina Van Tassel. She studied singing and spent long hours at the schoolhouse practicing. She was a stunning beauty with distinctive features. The moment she would enter a room, people would be rendered breathless, stunned by her presence. She had a kind of grace and energy to her that radiated throughout every space she was in, and Ichabod was not immune to it. 
The only thing that could take his attention away from his books was a chance to talk with Katrina. She had a flirtatious personality that made the people around her feel special and connected to her. Ichabod already felt drawn to Katrina and was considering asking for her hand. But one day, he decided that he must have Katrina as his wife. He walked her home through the dark forest. As usual, there was a fog clinging to the ground and trees, blanketing everything in a foreboding haze that sent a shiver down people's spines. But. Ichabod put on a brave face. He was trying to impress Katrina, and no amount of haunting, mysterious energy could stop him from doing so. When they reached Katrina's home, Ichabod was stunned. Before them were rolling evergreen hills that stretched as far as the eye could see. They were crisscrossed with wooden fences and the most breathtaking cattle that he had ever seen. Flowers dotted the fields, and on the far side of the property, a lush garden seemed to sparkle in what little sunshine was making its way through the clouds. It was the finest farm Ichabod had ever seen, and he realized that marrying Katrina would ensure he lived the rest of his days in absolute comfort. So, Ichabod forged ahead with pursuing Katrina with even more vigor. Every few days, he would take the long journey through the forest to reach her house. He would sing psalms if he needed to, as he waded through the thick foliage and fog, trying his best not to look to either side for fear of catching a glimpse of something strange. He spent afternoons pretending to teach Katrina singing. But under the not-so-watchful eyes of her parents, he would spend most of his time trying to woo her. He would flirt with her and shower her with compliments, spending much of the time sprinkling in hints of his wisdom and his work ethic. His eyes sparkled when he looked at her, and sometimes, when she looked at him, he could see a spark igniting within her gaze. It stirred something deep inside of him, and he longed to take her as his bride. But there was another man who longed for the same thing. Brom Bones was known as a bit of a troublemaker. He was loud and proud, boisterous at every event held in the town. He was known throughout the country for his feats of strength and his heroism, and as such, was liked by everyone in town. His mischievous energy and overconfidence would have upset some, but his kindness and humor made it nearly impossible to dislike him. He had his pick of women to woo, but Katrina had caught his eye the moment he saw her. Many would have given up if they knew someone like Brahm was pursuing the woman they had eyes on. 
but Ichabod refused to yield. There was no one that had made him feel the way that she did, and no one that he believed could give him a future as bright as she could. And so, the two men pursued Katrina, who was equally interested in both of them. Brahm was furious with Ichabod for pursuing Katrina, wanting to put an end to things. He tried to challenge Ichabod to a contest of physical strength. However, Ichabod knew that that was not his strong suit, and as such, he rejected any proposal Brahm made in that regard. That greatly frustrated Brahm, who instead decided to try and humiliate Ichabod any way he could in front of Katrina. Yet, Ichabod remained steadfast in his fascination and pursuit of Katrina. One cold autumn day, while teaching in the classroom, Ichabod received a letter from the Van Tassels. He quickly gave his students an assignment to work on and sat by the fire, opening the letter with quivering, excited fingers. The letter was an invitation to a party at the Van Tassels farm, taking place later that evening. Ichabod was overjoyed to receive the invitation and decided to send his students home early so that he could prepare for the night. He wanted to impress Katrina's parents and spend some nice quality time with her, and this party seemed like a perfect opportunity to do so. Ichabod hurried home to a local farmer's house where he was staying. He put on his only suit, one he had had for several years, and borrowed the farmer's horse, an old plow horse named Gunpowder. The horse had seen better years but was still a worthy companion who hurried through the woods with ease. When he arrived at the party, Ichabod immediately found himself in heaven. The party was full of seemingly endless pastries, cakes, and fine dishes, enough to dine on all night. He had never seen such a display of food, and it was only another reminder of the Van Tassel's wealth. He dove into the food, dining on it with abundance and glee. Every bite was more delicious than the last, and it made him more hopeful for the future. When he spotted Katrina enter the party from across the room, his heart skipped a beat. He approached her, feeling confident, and asked her to dance. As the two danced across the floor, nothing else in the world mattered. Ichabod could not keep his eyes off of Katrina. She carried such joy and beauty in every step that she took, in every turn and twirl that she made. It was impossible not to smile in her presence, not to sink into her eyes and want to stay there forever. As the dance neared its end, Ichabod caught sight of Brahm, who was glaring at him from the side of the dance floor. 
jealousy was burning in his eyes, and it only made Ichabod more pleased. He believed that Katrina's admiration of him was so obvious that even Brahm could not deny it. When the dance ended, Ichabod went over to join a group of men, seemingly in deep discussion. He was walking on cloud nine as he made his way over, and he was delighted even more when he realized the men were discussing the local legends of Sleepy Hollow. The ghost stories grew like the flames of a bonfire, crackling and growing more intense with every bit of fuel that was added. The headless horseman came up more than once, and each time it sent a shiver down Ichabod's spine. Brahm claimed to have encountered the headless horseman on a dark and stormy night and challenged him to a race for a bowl of punch, though Ichabod was far less interested in his story. As the party began to die down, Ichabod could not peel his eyes off of Katrina from across the room. He knew that he must approach her, and he did so with the utmost confidence. They talked fervently to each other, far away from the ears of the other guests, and to this day, no one is quite sure what transpired in the course of their conversation. But what is known is that Ichabod left the conversation looking utterly crestfallen. He grabbed the reins of his horse with trembling hands, not even bothering to cast a glance back at Katrina as he rode off into the night. Shaken by his disappointment, Ichabod's mind wandered back to the ghost stories that had been discussed all night. It was a moonless night, the kind of night that makes every tree and every branch look like a threat. The darkness seemed to close in on Ichabod, making his heart race more quickly with every step of his horse's hooves. His uneasiness grew as the night seemed to darken, and the trees seemed to creak louder. The owls all looked down at him, following him as he made his way deeper into the forest. Ichabod could see a tree ahead, Major Andre's tree, an old tree with legends attached to it. He was terrified to pass it, and had to whistle to calm himself down enough to even pass by the tree. He knew that ahead, the town church waited, the town church where the headless horseman was said to be sighted nearly every night. Ichabod's chest tightened as he neared the church. He got closer and closer and closer still, and just as he was crossing the bridge by the church, his horse came to a stop. Ichabod tightened his hands on the reins, taking a deep breath of the crisp, fresh night air. But as his gaze swept up, 
his heart stopped. There was a figure by the edge of the brook, a dark, blooming figure. Ichabod knew he could not outrun any of the ghosts or goblins he had heard legends of. Desperate to prove it wasn't either, he called out with a quivering voice, asking who the figure was. But the figure did not respond. Ichabod urged gunpowder forward and began to recite a psalm to himself. Just as the psalm began to calm him, the figure began to move toward him. Ichabod urged his horse faster, but it was no use. Soon, the figure was riding alongside him. It was a man on a horse, but Ichabod didn't dare look at the man any closer. He tried to outpace the horseman, urging his horse faster and faster. But the horse kept up with the other horse. Ichabod tried to tell himself the horseman was just a strange man. But as they reached the crest of a hill and the horseman was visible against the night sky, Ichabod realized something terrifying. The horseman had no head. A shiver ran down Ichabod's spine. He snapped the reins of his horse, panicking, and gunpowder took off running. Ichabod urged the horse faster and faster through the fog gaining some ground on the horseman. But in his frenzy, the saddle was made askew. Ichabod clung to the neck of his horse, desperate to stay on somehow. He found himself slipping as they dashed through the dark night. And in the scramble, they began to slow down Soon, the headless horseman was again upon them. Ichabod looked up just as the headless horseman lifted his head into the sky and threw it towards him. Ichabod felt the head hit him, knocking him to the ground. The last thing he saw was the stars overhead as he slowly fell asleep. The next morning, the farmer found gunpowder in his yard without Ichabod. Worried for Ichabod's safety, the farmer searched and found Ichabod's saddle and hat next to a smashed pumpkin. Ichabod was never seen by the people of Sleepy Hollow again. Some say Ichabod skipped down, embarrassed by Katrina's rejection. Some say that the encounter with the headless horseman scared him so much that he fled town forever. Others whisper that he was spirited away by the headless horseman and became one of his many victims. Either way, the mysteries of Sleepy Hollow still prevail to this day. We may never know what is true and what is legend in that mysterious little town, but perhaps it is better that way. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story and it has brought you a night of peaceful, relaxing sleep. Please join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story.
Until then, sweet dreams. Sweet dreams.